Hello everyone, Beastie here. I am back with another video and uh, even though I do have 2v2 con on my YouTube channel, uh, I never actually made a guide for 2v2 and that's something that a lot of people have been asking me every time I play team games. What are the best comms? What do you suggest uh, You know, for me to play with my friend? Uh, what are the best races? What are best combos? And so on and so forth. So I'm here to finally uh, hopefully help you guys out with that. For those that maybe don't know who I am or don't know my experience in 2v2s, I've reached uh, rank 1 uh, in 2v2s in the past and the last 4 or 5 uh, high level competitive tournaments with pro gamers I ended up winning like 4 of them and then I got uh, second place in one of them. Now um, yeah let's just let's just get started so as you can see on your screen there are all the possible combinations for 2v2 so Terran versus Terran, Terran, versus, uh, Terran with Zerg sorry then with Protoss, 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 uh, Protoss, Zerg, 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 and then random at the end as well. Um, so I'm going to quickly explain how you should play each uh, kind of combination uh, in your games and then what you should be worried about when facing that team. And then I'll give you guys my personal opinion based on my experience in um, random 2v2 games where you get matched with a random ally or if you're doing a pre-made with a friend of yours or if you're playing some kind of tournament what in my opinion the best um, combinations are for the races so first things first Terran Terran um, you will meet a lot of Terrans in 2v2 games probably followed up by a lot of Zergs and then probably followed up by Protoss the least because Protoss is very tricky in 2v2s and the Terran Terran combo has a lot of options um, you can go for some kind of proxy, like 8 barracks, just marine, uh, and try to bunker rush one of the players. Uh, you can go for 3 Rex Reaper, both of you are in 3 Rex Reaper, which is a very popular strategy as well, uh, where you basically overwhelm one of the guys. So if you're Terran Terran playing against um, Terran Zerg, you can, you know, attack with 6 barracks Reaper uh, either player. And also what a lot of players do is, in order to kind of maximize the, uh, <clears throat> the micro potential, uh, they share the control, so one guy actually micros all the Reapers and it becomes uh, a lot easier because if your ally shares you the control, you can still use the Reaper grenades from his Reapers, as well as yours, of course. So you can be very, very aggressive. It has a lot of potential for, uh, you know, for aggressive uh, play in the early game, but also if one of you goes bio and kind of plays very active on the map, the other guy can go mech. So you kind of have this 400 supply army of Marine Marauder, Siege Tank, Liberator, Viking, uh, which is kind of like, you know, if, if both of you play together, it's basically like a one-on-one -on -one huge ass Terran army. So you can play both early game, you can play mid game, early game cheeses are super strong. And um, moving into the late game, uh, you have, you know, mass battle cruisers, Widow Mines, uh, Liberator. So a lot of option the only thing you're lacking is the aoe damage but can't have it all so the next uh combination is terran plus zerg this is one of the most probably i would say actually the most popular combo since the beginning of the game um it, it's you know when you think of 2v2 the first thing uh, the first thing i think of is uh, terran zerg uh, a lot of a lot of strong aggression early on and probably the strongest early aggression combination where you can go with again three racks reaper early pull you can go uh you know mass slings with some kind of one on one 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 push uh you can do ravager pushes with Terran having siege tanks and vikings um you can do reactor heli and banshee plus mass sling which is probably something you guys have faced before so just a lot of early game cheese options and this is probably known as the most aggressive opener so if you're playing um a ladder and you're one of these races and you're playing uh, with random teammates well um you know you're going to be getting this matchup quite a bit or this this combo on your side and you're probably going to have a lot of success with it um moving into the mid game uh there's a lot of strategies like uh, feeding the zerg gas for mutalisks so basically what you do is you guys you both expand and then terran keeps making reactor hellions or just pure marine and while the zerg is taking up to lair then what terran does is feeds all the gas to the zerg so you basically overwhelm your opponent with mass mass mutalisks 
And this is especially successful and kind of needed in mirror matchups if you play Terran Zerg versus Terran Zerg. Uh, because usually what that boils down to is a lot of muta play. So if one Terran is feeding his own Zerg with gas, then he's simply going to overwhelm the other Zerg and then it's basically, you know, 2v1 game. So, a lot of options. Late game, of course. If you go Mech, Broodlord, it's incredibly powerful together with Infestors, um, uh, Infestors, uh, Vipers, you know, Corruptor, Broodlord, and it's just good old Mech with a bunch of Siege things, Thors, some Vikings, Liberator, Battlecruisers. So, it's just very, very strong throughout the whole game. Um, as far as this matchup goes, the units don't really work out well in the mid game uh, because you would have like, you know, Hellions and Roaches, which don't really complement each other, or Hellions and Hydras. Um, you know, if you go Mech, then one is Immobile, one is Mobile. If you go Bio plus, um, you know, Link Bane, again, it's, you know, one units are melee, the other units are ranged, they work differently, but early game and late game is really, really strong. Terran and Protoss. Uh, is the next one, and uh, Terran and Protoss has a lot of options. Now, Terran and Protoss uh, can do a lot of cheeses, but it's not as fast, and it's not as, uh, you know, kind of just out there, like you go in and it, the game might end. It's more of a, like, sophisticated cheese, so instead of going for 3 Rex Reaper, uh, it's not very good with Protoss Ally. The reason for that is... Protoss cannot follow up that quickly with, with you know, his own cheese. Protoss needs a little bit of time to build up. You can do some kind of 3 ranks Reaper variation so that your Protoss ally can expand or something like that because Protosses are vulnerable in team games. But other than that, you're probably, if you want to cheese early on, uh, look into some 1-1-1 one, 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 one pushes with Marine Siege Tank, Liberator, uh, maybe Banshees, maybe Vikings. And your Protoss ally will probably support you with like Immortals, uh, Sentries, Force Fields are great because you have Siege Tanks uh, that will obviously outrange the enemy units. And then once they engage on you, the Protoss ally can, you know, help you with Zealots tanking for your Siege Tanks, some Force Fields, Immortals kind of be able to, you know, push in a little bit. Maybe even Blink Stalkers are very, very good because they're very mobile and they can protect the Siege Tanks really, really well. Now... Probably the most popular playstyle for Terran and Protoss is Mech with Air Toss. This is something that's been used in competitive scene quite a bit and is very, very strong, if used correctly. Uh, but this is something I would not suggest you try and do in random teams. Uh, this is something that is basically Protoss rushing into double Stargate Phoenix while Terran is going into um, Hellions and just Mech in general. The reason why this doesn't really work in uh, random teams is because Protoss needs to be protected uh, by any Zerg attacks, or, um, ground attacks early on, especially the Zerg ones like Massling. And if your Terran is just kind of, you know, doing nothing at his own base or maybe doesn't see the links running into your base, you're going to lose whole mineral line and, uh, well, you're going to pro probably lose the game. But overall... Um, Early on, some potential for cheese for sure. It has to be a little bit more coordinated. It's not just like make units and go, like uh, Terran and Zerg or uh, Double Terran is. Going into the mid game, I think is very, very strong. If you manage to go past that uh, early game and then late game, it is, in my opinion, the strongest uh, comp that you have with just a lot of mech units and then Sky Protoss with Carrier, Storm, and Tempest. So. Uh, if both you and your friend, for example, if you're playing and if you love playing the, you know, long game, this is probably the, the combo for you. Now, Protoss Protoss, in my opinion, is probably the weakest comp in random teams. Again, Protoss is very vulnerable in the early game and you kind of need help from your ally to survive early game. And even if you kind of build yourself up with some shield batteries, then you won't be able to help your, your ally if he gets all in by both of the players because your early game units are like stalkers or adepts that can get surrounded very easily uh, with zerglings. And I feel like this is a matchup that both player Protoss players need to be experienced in surviving alone versus two players because they will not be able to assist each other. But you know, if you get to the super late game, 400 supply of carriers and Tempest and Storm is uh, pretty good, but you're going to have a really rough time uh, actually getting there. 
Um, Protoss and Zerg. Protoss and Zerg is a really, really weird combo uh, because the races are completely different. Now, early game cheese will pretty much be non-existent. Uh, Zerg has their Zerging so fast and then again Protoss takes a while to build up. And by the time the warp kit is done or you know void razor done whatever you're trying to cheese with the enemy will probably have defense against the zerglings whether it's a wall off or you know hellions so they don't really complement each other in the early game uh you can go for some aggressive plays with like mass zergling maybe proxy oracles but it's it's one of those things where you kind of have to move as one and it just requires quite a bit coordination to make it work and it's still not as powerful as some of the some of the other comps now moving into the mid game uh, again you're not going to have a lot of synergy with your units unless you go for specific strategies which i'm about to mention what they are and then in the late game you have very very powerful army with uh broodlord corruptor viper infester tempest carrier uh high templars so just a very very strong lineup of casters a lot of aoe damage and if you get to that point your army will be extremely powerful and you will still have the mobility of the Zerg and kind of just the sturdiness of the Protoss. Uh, but getting there requires a little bit of practice and um, most Zerg players in, in random teams kind of like to rush. And as a Protoss, you don't really want to do that unless you're, you know, it's kind of like you, you, you're both agreed on doing that. And uh, even then, if, you know, you're going for an Oracle and then your Zerg buddy loses all his lings, well you're gonna have a rough time and you won't be able to defend them with just one oracle in the early game against like hellion ling or something like that now the specific play styles for this um specific combo uh, it can go two ways the zerg can try to go hatch first and just get a lot of lings and kind of take the map control make sure that the protoss doesn't take damage and allow protoss to kind of build up and kind of hit their, you know, the longer the game goes, the products get stronger and stronger. Or you can go the opposite way, which uh, I've actually seen in tournaments quite a bit. And that is that the Zerg goes for fast triple hatch. Uh, and the Protoss opens one base Stargate with a later expansion. So what the Protoss does is kind of keeps track of the enemy and scouts constantly. And denies any kind of early pushes with Phoenix and, and an Oracle while the zerg is just mass droning and then kind of explodes with either mass mutalisks or just maxes out on roaches super quick but again it's something that you're not really going to do well in, in random teams but something that's very very good in um, actual team games if you practice with your uh, teammate or ally your friend or whoever else and then the last um combination is the zerg zerg this is something you've probably met a lot, and these kinds of teams usually rush. Uh, if you meet Zerg Zerg, expect to be rushed with either like 12 pool, mass lings, ling bane, just all sorts of uh, cheese. Um, Zerg Zerg teams usually are very, probably the easiest to execute. Uh, it's just, you know, Zerg thrives in, in, uh, in chaos, so it's very easy to execute even with a random ally. You just go spawning pool, you get zergling speed, and you both just go, and you just kill one guy. It's very easy to team up and just kill, you know, the enemy zerg player or try to rush the protoss player. And once you get into the base, you can kill all the probes. And then from then on out, you can just pull back, drone up, and you're good to go. Now, I feel like this comp suffers a lot in the mid game. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, overall in StarCraft, I feel that zerg is not very good in the mid game section uh, especially in 2v2s because you're kind of stuck on units that are not really tech heavy you're maybe on like link bane roach hydra um and the enemy if you're playing against terran and protoss you know they're gonna have siege tanks that are completely going to deny your uh ground army especially with 2v2 maps being kind of choked up quite a bit not a lot of open space and then if you play against protoss players if you don't manage to do a lot of damage in the early game you're going to be playing against mass phoenix which obviously are very very good against zerg uh, especially in team games where it's two of you so the phoenix has become even more effective and um yeah uh moving into the late game again you have this you know mass army of uh zerg late game which is extremely extremely strong if micro properly uh with brewlord corruptor ultra zergling runbys and everything else 
but again it's one of those things that getting there uh, can be a little bit problematic but a lot of potential for these early game cheeses so if you're a zerg player playing random teams you know if you get matched with either Terran or zerg you're probably gonna have a good time it doesn't mean that if you get matched with Protoss, you're gonna lose it's just not as strong uh, with an ally that you're not really coordinated with in random teams. Now, I put the random in there as well. And uh, people ask me, like, is random good for team games? And how much does it impact? Well, if you play 2v2s, let's say, with your ally and you're both random, it makes it hard for the opponent to do any kind of early cheese because... Let's say you both get Protoss and they go through Rex Reaper. That's not going to be as strong as Protoss. So it kind of eliminates some of the cheeses because they don't know what they're facing. And by the time they scout you, it's kind of too late to make that decision. But also it allows you to be unpredictable. It allows you to switch it up from game to game, literally, because you're getting different races. And, you know, when you play random teams, sometimes the, the random player is not going to be good with one race and it will be very good with other races so that's kind of like the the downside of it i guess uh the good the good side is the the opponents obviously won't know what race he got what kind of unit comp they want to go for do they want to open one base two base and you can do some early cheeses as a random player but the downside is if you play random teams or even arranged teams uh not you know random players in general usually have one strong race and then two kind of eh races, not very good. So, yeah, I mean, if you like playing random, go for it. But it doesn't have a specific kind of role within these uh, these matchups and uh, combinations. Now, we're going to move into my opinion of best random uh, teams in 2v2. Again, uh, random teams, when I say that, I don't mean the race. I mean when you queue up a 2v2 a game alone and you get a random teammate... Uh, we're going to move into that and kind of give you guys my opinion on the top three combos. Boom. So, again, the most obvious one, uh, I mentioned it before, is the Terran and Zerg. It's it's literally been in the strongest matchup since the beginning of, of StarCraft 2. Uh, it was even strong in Brood War. Um, it allows for a lot of early game cheeses. It has... A very good mid game with mutas and, and feeding strategies with a lot of you know high level 2 2 players knowing those kind of feeding strategies so if you're lower league you're gonna cheese a lot and then as you go higher and higher you'll see people asking for those feeding strategies with mutas and then again late game is pretty pretty strong so if you get there you don't really require a lot of coordination it, it, you know it's a lot of siege tanks sieging up uh, brood lords and kind of just going together not necessarily like oh you need to fungal so i can do this it's very easy uh early game is easy no one likes to play against Terran and zerg because they're very hard to uh to defend uh their most common strategies when they cheese is the massling hellion and the reason for that is if you're playing against another zerg player if your Terran just you know supports you with hellions and you kill the enemy zerg uh, Zerglings, then you can just go in his base and kill everything else. Protoss players are gonna struggle defending um, these two uh, these two races, and then if their ally gets rushed, they're gonna have a hard time helping out the ally. So that is my number one pick. The number two pick again is the Terran Terran that I've discussed. Six Rex Reaper is super super strong. Uh, you know, one player going mech, one player going bio is very very strong. Doesn't require a lot of coordination and the reason why I put it at two, it's very easy for, um, even if it's a random team, since you both play the same race, it's very easy to understand each other, when you can go, when you can push, how much damage you took, and uh, just how your race works and how your allies' uh, race works in 2v2. Uh, a lot of strong pushes, um, eh, late game, but you don't really get too, too often into the late game in random teams, so... That's why I put this team as number two. Uh, number three is the Zerg Zerg. Again, you know, getting to that mid and late game. It might be a struggle if you fail your early game cheeses. Uh, it is a struggle if both of you try to macro because uh, Zergs, especially in lower leagues, overdrawn quite often and they can die easily. But the cheese is extremely strong and extremely, extremely easy to execute. 
And um, again, if, if the two guys, you know, rush one of the opponents together and his ally doesn't help him, which happens quite often in random teams, by the way, um, then you're going to be picking up a lot of free wins. So that is my number three. As you can see, there's no Protoss. Uh, not because Protoss is bad, just because Protoss requires, like I said, help from his ally, support from his ally, and a little bit more coordination. Now, I'm going to show you the last picture for... Uh, th again, this is the random team, so when you queue up alone in 2 versus 2, these are my top 3 um, combinations for races. And now we're going to move into the kind of arranged teams whenever you play with your teammate or if you play in a tournament. These are my top 3 picks based on my tournament experience in 2v2s and just playing uh, arranged teams in general. So as you can see, things have changed a little bit. Terran Terran is gone, Zerg Zerg is gone. And I would say Zerg Zerg is probably the worst uh, combination you can do in a ranged teams because, you know, a good team will be able to deflect your early game cheese and then you're suffering quite a bit from being the same race. As it, And you can see that um, double race, basically, you know, Terran Terran, Protoss Protoss and Zerg Zerg, I would probably put as the bottom three. Um, the reason for that is you are suffering from a weakness of not having the diversity in your units. The opponents kind of know what you're going to make, right? Like what units you can go for. You're very limited as far as the unit compositions go. And you can basically get countered by Phoenix. You can get countered by um, specific units. Like you can't really go for mass muta strategy because everyone will expect you to do so and they will be opening anti-air units whether it's phoenix or marines um you know mech thors and so on so a lot of strategies just become much much worse you're forced to go ground units and zerg zerg not as not as good same thing for terran terran protoss protoss you will just get kind of countered by enemies building units that are good against your race in specific <clears throat> now I'm going to start with the number three, Protoss and Zerg. Uh, I've said that this combo is not very good if you play with random teammate, but if you play with a ranged teammate, um, we've actually faced this quite a bit in tournaments, and the Zergs did go heavy, heavy on the macro, like tri triple hatchery, and then just kind of pop off in economy, while Protoss behind that was kind of keeping the map control with Phoenix, with Oracles, and then they kind of swap out. Protoss protects the Zerg early on, and then Zerg protects the Protoss, while Protoss goes Carriers and Tempest. So if played well, it's a very, very strong comp. You can do some delayed cheeses, like, I don't know, like Super Fast Nidus with like, uh, you know, two Stargate Phoenix, or I don't know, I'm just talking random things. You can have Protoss open DTs to keep the enemies busy while your Zerg drones up. And then uh, your goal is basically to move into the late game and... Um, just have a lot of spellcasters, a lot of AoE, which is going to make it super, super difficult for your opponents to um, to deal with. Now, my second pick, this was the first pick in the random teams. In the ranged teams, it is still very, very strong comp. It is, uh, you know, super strong in the early game. Uh, it, it's going to be very hard for the opponents to deal with strategies like 3 Rex Reaper plus Mass Sling or Reactor Hellions into Banshees plus Mass Sling. But it's not impossible. Um, you know, there are definitely ways to deal with them. And this top three depends, just like the random teams, depends a lot on the maps. Uh, there are 2v2 maps where you share a base together. And obviously, uh, double Zerg, for example, teams are not as strong on those. Uh, because the enemy team can just wall off and you're kind of screwed. But more than half of the maps at any point on the ladder in 2v2s are... Um, you know both you and your ally not being close to one another so it's very easy to isolate your opponents uh, with early game rushes which is why early game rushes is so strong but when, <clears throat> when you get to higher level excuse me uh it's a it becomes easier to kind of understand what you need to do and how to defend these early game rushes so even though they're super strong it, it is possible to defend them and it doesn't you know really stay as the top top combo in my opinion uh, this is a combo that I won uh, the tournaments that I played in. Um, it creates for, again, a lot of strategies. You can rush, 
Uh, you can both expand and kind of just play defensive into mech plus Munas, which is something that I did quite a bit when I played with uh, with Nurcio. Um, we would both expand, go into reactor Hellions, and I would stay on factory tech. He would rush up Munas from two base. Uh, we would continuously both expand. I would feed him all the gas, and once we overtook the air control, I would go into you know normal mech uh, with a lot of siege tanks while he kind of was on the map with Mutas, he would go into Broodlords, and I would just go into that max out uh, mech style. You can also do stuff like Bio Link Bane, but again, it depends on the map. If the map is open, if it's choked up, you want to go mech and, you know, stuff like that. So a lot of potential. Again, late game is super, super strong. And uh, yeah, it's a scary, scary matchup. Or, uh, you know, uh, race combo. I keep saying uh, matchup. The number one, in my opinion, team for 2v2 games is Terran and Protoss. Um, these two races have a lot of synergy. Again, their early game is not as strong. They will most likely be on the defensive unless they're doing some kind of 1-1-1 one -on -one 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 plus, um, you know, Protoss going sentries or blink stalkers and kind of pushing in together as one big strong push. Um... <clears throat> this team you'll most likely see it on the defensive trying to get to later stages into the game because the later they go it the better it is for them uh, the way that the races work together it allows them <clears throat> to skip a lot of the tech to skip a lot of the early game units um, Hellion Phoenix is probably the strongest um, unit composition in the early to mid game in 2v2 some of you may be like, well, don't they just die to, you know, Stalkers? Because the Protoss will be opening double Stargate, you can actually overwhelm the number of Stalkers that the opponent is having. And also, if you see that they're going one base, you can just make Bunkers, um, plus the Phoenix, plus Hellions, you'll be able to deflect that. Uh, this combo is very good against Zerg teams. It actually kind of, in my opinion, destroys Zerg teams because you will have Hellions to defend early game cheeses. You will have... Uh, Phoenix to de de deny any kind of drops from Tyrion or Protoss, and you will have Phoenix to harass the Zerg throughout the whole game, kill their overlords, kill their Phoenix, and just kind of have the complete control of the map because Hellions are one of the fastest ground units, um, Phoenix are one of the fastest air units, if not the fastest, I'm not gonna throw out numbers out there, I'm not sure. And uh, yeah. The, the strength in this comp is just kind of allowing you, instead of going into, you know, Stim and then late game turn, you kind of go straight into Hellions, into Siege Tanks after that, and you can also feed gas to the Protoss to go Carriers, you don't need to. Um, you both try to expand together, you both try to play together with Hellion plus Phoenix. It counters almost all the unit comps you can do in the early game as far as cheeses go. And uh, moving into the mid game, by the time that the enemy team is pushing, like doing like a stem timing, the Terran should have some siege things. The Protoss should already be transitioning to Tempest. And um, yeah, overall, it's super, super strong combo. And then <clears throat> going into the late game, uh, you have Carrier Tempest with Oracles for Vision plus some Storms with just, you know, 3 3 upgraded mech with some Thors, Hellions running by everywhere. Uh, in this patch, you also have wooden mines that you can burrow and they're stealthed. So, a lot of potential, a lot of strong units. And in my opinion, this is the best comp. Like I said, it requires for the Terran to kind of babysit the Protoss a little bit. But it also requires for the Protoss to babysit the Terran because the only units Terran will have are the Hellions in the early game. So, you kind of need to defend your Terran player with, uh, with Phoenix. You, as a Terran player, you need to make missile turrets for the Protoss, uh, you know, for DTs, or just if if perhaps he loses the Phoenix War for a little bit, you gotta send him money to help him out. It is difficult to play, but if played perfectly, I think it is simply the best 2v2 uh, race combination that you can have. And that is pretty much it. Uh, I wanted to, like I said, to create this video. A lot of you guys have been asking me, what is my opinion? You know, I started playing with my friend. What race comp should we play? Is Terran Zerg viable? Is Terran Terran viable? Is Protoss Protoss viable? We heard it's bad. All the comps are viable, especially if you've played with your friend. You can make it work for sure. Uh, you just gotta figure out 
um, you know, how to, you got to figure out what your strength is. So if you're playing Zerg Zerg, your strength is early game. So try to work on doing early game rushes. If you're Protoss Protoss, try to work on how to survive till you get to those later stages. Just try to work on that. And if you're playing uh, random teams, if you're Protoss, don't get discouraged. Um, like I said, these are my top three picks. This doesn't mean that Protoss doesn't work. I actually have a pretty good win rate when I play Protoss in uh, 2v2. It's all about knowing what you need to do and how to survive uh, the specific race combinations uh, depending on what race you're playing, kind of knowing what your options are and just kind of relying on your strengths. If you're a Terran and Zerg, you know, you should know that you have a lot of early game cheese uh, potential and you can focus on that or you can move into the, you know, the middleest part or kind of the later stages of the game. Anyway, if you guys have any questions regarding two versus two, uh, feel free to ask in the comments below. Again, I stream team games very, very often on my stream. You can check me out there, twitch.tv slash pcutie. And also I have a bunch of team games uploaded, including the tournament games on my YouTube channel. So you can check out those as well to see how I play 2v2s, uh, whether I play Terran or uh, Protoss or Zerg. But that will be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I want to thank you guys for watching. I wish you to have a great day and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe and make sure to check out one of my previous videos. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a very nice day and I'll see you guys next time.